Hey, Buff Nation voice of the bus, Mark Johnson here. Coming up this week in the Buffalo Stampede, we're talking a lot of basketball. How about the CU women's program on fire? Second consecutive 20-win season, ranked number 21 of the country, coming off a sweep of the Washington schools. We're going to talk with head coach J.R. Payne. Also look back at a great reunion weekend. The 1993 Elite Eight team under Seal Berry got back together, so we'll hear about that. On the men's side, the men coming off a loss at Utah, getting ready to head to Arizona. We're going to talk with head coach Tad Boyle and also our player guest, Javon Ruffin, coming up this week on the Buffalo Stampede. CU women's basketball team is on. There's some great highlights. The Buffs knock off by two. Washington State last Friday night at the event center. Hi, everybody. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. We come to you from Corelli's. Monday nights are out here from 7 until 8 o'clock for Buffs primetime with head coaches J.R. Payne, Tad Bull, always a player guest as well. And how about those CU women? Second year in a row, they've won 20 games in a row as they sweep the Washington schools last week at the event center. And by the way, we saw Jalen Sherrod right there for the first time this year. She was named the Pac-12 Player of the Week. And here at Corelli's, we caught up with the head coach, J.R. Payne. Presented by Coors Light. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshment, made to chill. Celebrate responsibly. How about the Colorado women? 20 wins on the season. Back-to-back well, -back 20 win seasons. Number 21 of the country as the poll came out today. That's the highest you've been ranked all season long, I think. Yeah. Definitely. Like yeah, yeah, definitely. We're hoping to keep climbing as much <laughs> as we right. can. Coming off sweeps, 71-68 uh, over Washington State on Friday and then on Sunday. A dominating way, 65-43. to 43. This thing, I mean, you know, I, I know this isn't true. It kind of feels like it's just on cruise control. Everyone's, yeah. You're playing so well, and but I mean, the way you're coming out and playing every single game, there's a consistency about this team, right? There now. is a level of consistency. I think every coach in the country would say they strive for consistency. Yeah. Um, and, I, yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think it's a credit to our upperclassmen who, you know, are doing a great job of leading and holding us to a really high standard, you know, pretty much every day, even in practice and things like that. Um, you know, but yeah, it's been great so far. We're just trying to keep it going. You know, I mentioned they're ranked 21st in the country this morning. Did I see this afternoon that uh, Jalen Sherrod was named the Pac-12 yeah. Player of the Week? Yes, huh? I know. I messaged her and said, finally, it's about time. <laughs> uh, but she was incredible this weekend and very much deserved that. Honor. Talk about the way she's playing right now for you. Yeah, I mean, Jalen's been, I mean, she's playing great. You know, she had a big surgery a couple of years ago and, and has really bounced back well from that. She worked incredibly hard on her three-point shooting all spring, all summer, or all fall, because that was an area that was a weakness for, for her. Um, so shooting a high percentage, I mean, her assisted turnover numbers, I think she leads the league in steals. You know, she's top five in assists and yeah. all that. So she's she's playing great. I mean, she had career-high 27 points Sunday or Friday night, excuse me, 15 in the fourth quarter alone to spark a comeback win over Washington State. She's just absolutely great. That, that game right there was that that was a gut check win for oh, yeah. to come back. Talk about you know the way you guys performed there in the fourth. Yeah, I mean we played well. We went in tied at halftime, played well enough. You know Washington State's a really good team. Um, and then third quarter we were just the pits. Like we were bad. We couldn't score. We couldn't get a stop. It was, you know, and and in the timeout sort of in between the third and fourth quarter, I think it was T that said it to the team. He said this is starting to feel a lot like USC guys. And that was the game where we just didn't have the energy we needed to win or we weren't playing well enough to win. And so the whole team, I think that kind of woke everybody up like, whoa, we can't let that happen again. Right. Um, and so Jalen, you know, obviously set the tone the way that she played that fourth quarter, but the whole team responded, rallied, huge comeback victory for us. That, that says something, though, about this roster, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they respond. They respond in practice. They respond, yeah. you know, you can challenge them, you know, directly, indirect, like whatever it takes to you know, to, to coach them up, they're willing to be coached. That's part of the ownership coaches talk about, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Because the one thing, if, if you're the driving force behind you and your staff, 
it's another thing when they take ownership and in those kind of situations, they go back out and go, we, we got this coach. We're- yeah, and, and I think that's sort of what we were laughing after the game. Like Jalen, you know, going into the fourth quarter, kind of looked at everybody and said, don't worry, I got this. You know, because <laughs> of just the way that she took over. But truly in huddles, like when things aren't necessarily going our way, it's not always us that sure. as coaches that are doing the rah-rah, come on, let's go. You know, a lot of times it's Jalen, a lot of times it's Quay. Yeah. Um, you know, Frida will say her piece and just our leadership steps up when we need them. You know, I'm thinking about what you're talking about, Jay. That, that you know, we've always known she was talented, right? Yeah. But becoming an upperclassman like she is now and taking that kind of ownership and having that kind of uh, persona, if you will, that, that's what you want to see as immature. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just, you know, I messaged her when she got the award, just really proud, you know, not of the award. That's That's nice, you know, but proud of just the the growth that she's had you know this year and trying to be a leader and trying to be you know accountable and consistent and and be what our team needs needs her to be back to back 20 win season well, what does that say about your program right now and what you've built here yeah i mean i i just think we when we first got here you know we really tried to recruit people that were about the same things that we wanted to be about toughness hard work discipline put a big chip on your shoulder overcome you know and I and those, you know, I think one of our first classes graduated last year in Hollingshed and Peanut Tutelli and those guys. But Jalen and her class, Kendall Weta, you know, those younger players, they were all recruited with the same mindset. We want to be the toughest team in the country. We want to be the most hardest working team, most disciplined team. And they came here for that. You know, we don't we don't have a bunch of five star kids. We just don't we don't have any star kids, yeah. um, you know, but they work really hard. They believe in each other and they're about the same. Out. So here you're sitting. I think you're third right now in the Pac-12. You're right, right up there, just nipped at the heels of the two teams ahead of you at this point in time. That that when you're out, I would think you're still you're always recruiting. You're a coach. Yeah. That says something. You you're, you've got a new product, if you will. You're kind of selling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so it's not just hey, let's you know let's get better. Like, okay, we did get better. Now we're good. So right. come help us be great. Right. You know, the where we can truly talk about competing for a championship is different than. One day we want to win a championship, but we, we legitimately could talk about that. There's a head coach, J.R. Payne, to see you women now, 21st in the country in the latest AP College basketball poll as they get ready now for the stretch run of the season. Four games left. They're at the Arizona schools coming up this week, and then they've got the Bay Area schools to wrap up the regular season before they head to Vegas for the Pac-12 Conference Tournament. Speaking of women's basketball, coming up next here in the Stampede, a reunion last week at the Event Center as the Elite Eight 1993 team was back in town. Back in a moment. We're joined by the worn out Jalen Sherrod. Jalen, 27 points. That is a career high. 21 of those in the second half. You guys turned over Washington State three times in the last 61 seconds. A full end to end effort. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, this was a big win. Um, I told Coach Jay before it's, it's like a year first. You know, we never swept. Washington State back to back um, and twice in the season. So uh, that was my mindset going into this game, just trying to get it and keep the first going. Jalen, big weekend here with the Washington schools coming in. You stay one game off the pace for first place in the conference, just a game behind Stanford and Utah. The team's got 10 wins in the conference for just the second time in its history. Where are you at with five games left on the stretch? How you feeling? What's happening within the group? Um. I'm just proud of this team, man. I, I don't think anybody outside of us knew what we could be, and I'm just glad that we stuck to it. We believe in each other, um, and everybody just kind of meshed together in a way that I don't think a lot of people saw. We just come out here every day ready for a dog fight because that's what the Pac-12 is. Well, there's Jalen Sherrod. What a season she is having for the Cumberland Buffaloes as our Thad Anderson caught up with Jalen, who, by the way, ends up with those performances against Washington State and Washington, being the Pac-12 Player of the Week. Back in the Stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Mentioned before the break, there was the reunion for the 1993 Elite Eight team. Of course, Shelly Sheets, one of our own, was on that team. Seal Berry, the legendary coach, led that team to the final eight teams in the country, and she joined Thad on the television broadcast on Sunday versus Washington. Powered by Ford, cars, trucks, and SUVs built for America. Built Ford proud. Halftime festivities. I know it's been kind of throughout the weekend, but what's it like? I mean, you know, you've done these things and they happen, but every year, I don't know, I'm wondering how it feels to you when you come back, see everybody, you got young children coming out now. And oh my gosh, when you have former players that are 50 years old plus, then that, that you, don't, you don't want to question how old you are yourself, but it's so wonderful to see your former players and 
you know, I just love them. I love staying in touch with them. I love when they come back. The squeezes get harder. We, we just, there's a lot of love there. You know, I don't know if there's a moment from, in particular, we're talking about that 93 team. I mean, when you think back to that experience for you as a coach, are, are there things that pop out in your mind, or is it just a bigger, broader piece of work? You don't really think of the wins and losses as much as you do the relationships. And the fact that so many of those former players are back here this weekend uh, kind of is a testimonial to the fact that they really love CU and love their teammates and want to get back together any, any opportunity they have. Great to hear the legendary Seal Berry talking about that phenomenal 1993 season where the Buffaloes went on to the Elite Eight of the NCAA Tournament. As we continue here in the Stampede, the Buffs get the sweep over the weekend over the Washington Schools. Of course, blow out Washington on Sunday. And after that game, Thad had a great conversation with one of the stars of the game, Quay Miller. So you finished with 17 points, 12 rebounds. Talk about that double-double. Um, I don't know. It just comes. It just comes naturally. I try to focus on, you know, just doing whatever I can for my team to get the win. Um, and I'm just trying to be on the glass more for real, so. You just played your 25th game of the year. Mm -hmm. You had, what was it, eight players in double-digit minutes. The most anybody played was 31 minutes. That was Sherrod. You played 26. That's a good thing coming down the stretch as yeah. you get ready for postseason uh -huh. that you're looking at with a real chance. Mm -hmm. That distribution and the ability to spread around is pretty cool. Yeah, especially when everyone can score so they don't know who, whose night it's going to be. It can be anybody's night and everybody's ready to play. So a great weekend for the CU women's basketball team. Coming up next, they're on the road against the Arizona schools on Friday, 11 a.m. They're in Tempe to take on Arizona State. And then Sunday at noon at Arizona for the 21st rated team in the country. Coming up next, we're talking men's basketball coming off a loss at Utah. They get ready for the Arizona schools as well. As we continue here at Corelli's on the Buffalo Stampede. Where the hoop throw high the window, and it's something good. He went up over the top of his defender. Right wing Clifford with a ball flick. Drives his way on his way to the hoop. Reverse layup with a left hand is up and good. Knight pulls up for three. Right between the eyes from downtown. Well, there's some highlights. It was a pretty competitive ball game, but the Buffs fell behind the second half before they end up losing to the Utes of Utah, the first of the Rumble in the Rockies. Back in the stampede here at Corelli's. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Monday nights are out here from 7 until 8 o'clock for our Buffs primetime radio show on the Colorado Basketball Network. Work, and we caught up with head coach Tad Boyle talking about the game in Salt Lake City. The Utah game. You know, you had uh, the full week off last week. You go and play Utah. Yep. You and I were kind of joking with each other when we were doing pregame about uh, the way these two teams play defense. And I said, what do you think, 45-43, something along those lines? It didn't quite turn out that way. No, it didn't. Uh, one defensive team showed up. That was Utah. Yeah. But uh, we did not. Um, and it was, it was a little disappointing because I thought uh, – we matched up pretty well with them, even though they've got some really good players. And and the one thing about Utah, you forget, and and I, you know, I sometimes I forget it. But you know, Brandon Carlson, who's a terrific, he's playing like an all league guy. But they've also got you know Marco Anthony, who's, you know, as you look at his numbers, they're not that great. But then you look at his career; he's in his seventh year of college. Wow! And he looks, you know, you saw him. He's a grown man. He is a grown man. He is. He's, he he played on Virginia's national championship team, which was what four or five years ago. Yes. And uh, he goes, to, and then you know there are a lot of those kids that go to Utah have been on missions. Um, and again, I don't know which ones have, which one haven't. You know, you just watch film and you, you coach against their team this year. But they they had a uh, physically they were bigger and stronger than us. They were tougher than us, which really bothers me. You know, as you go back and watch the tape, I thought they won the toughness battle. Um, and so those are things we've talked about, you know, with our team. And, you know, we, we, we didn't charter that trip, so we came back commercially yesterday. And, and with the new NCAA rules, you, you can't take a travel day as your off day. So we watched film yesterday. You know, when we got back, JR's team was playing, and uh, they had that game well under control. We went in the film room and tried to get better. Um, and learn, and, and we'll see. Uh, you know, we we'll get another crack at them when they come back at the end of the end of the uh, regular season. But uh, disappointing game from the standpoint that I just didn't think we played uh, as well as we're capable of playing. And you know, we've become really dependent upon Tristan De Silva and and KJ Simpson to some degree, and and they took Tristan out of the game with double teams, and uh, we weren't able to step up. Yeah, I thought you did a good job in the post game of uh, making a differentiation, but I'll have to do the same thing yeah. here. So, 
You say we weren't the tougher team. They, they, you know, we we're tough enough yeah. in that ball game. But you said we competed. Help everybody understand what, what you mean. Yeah. So you know, look at the as, as the game went on. You know, we went to a full court press with about ten minutes to go. We're down twelve, and and our guys kept battling and they kept trying and they kept competing. But we just we didn't win the 50-50 balls. If there was a loose ball or a long rebound, we didn't come up with it. Utah came up with it. And to me, that's toughness. Had opportunities to, uh, when they were attacking the basket, to take charges or go vertical. Uh, Verticality, which is a new uh, term in college basketball over the last four or five years. We practice it. We we drill it. And uh, we we kind of bailed out. And Carlson got a wide open dunk. So those are the things that, you know, I want our players to understand. Like, those are toughness plays that we have to make possession after possession after possession. And the comp- competitive part, when you're playing hard and you're scrapping, you're every, that's the price of admission. You know, everybody does that. And look, our teams, there's no quit in our team. There's no doubt about it. We're just not tough enough at the time we need to be tough. And Utah was, and that's why they won the game. Yeah. You talk about uh, Tristan being kind of taken out of this one, mm-hmm. and when he ended up with uh, four points, when it was all said and done, I think. But yeah. I'll be working six. He ends up with six points, but the time it was all said and done. Shooting numbers were down. What were they doing to, to kind of? Well, they they we you know after it's it's funny, Mark. After every media timeout, I ran a play for Tristan. You know, one was to try to get him a three point shot. One was to try to get him a post up. One was trying to get him you know an isolation. You know, because he's the guy that 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 you know, is playing the best for us right now on a, on a consistent basis. So um, in the post, they would double him. When he got anywhere close to the basket, they would double him. And we were doubling Carlson as well. Yeah. Carlson was the same way, but they were able to take Carlson out of the or the, they were take, able to take Tristan out of the game. We weren't able to take Carlson out of the game. Part of it is he's seven foot. Uh, the other part is our guys' rotations were not good in our double team, and, and uh, they just did a better job than, than we did. You know, it's funny, they did to us that what everything we want to do to our opponents. They held us to 37% field goal percentage. Yep. They out-rebounded us by 12. That's exactly what we want to do, hold the other team to less than 40% and out-rebound them by eight or more. Uh, they beat us at our own game, and that's that's a little disheartening. Um, but that's where we are. That's what happened, and you got to live with it. Well, there's the head coach of the Buffaloes, Tan Boyle. He and the Bucks looking for answers down the stretch one of the season. They've got five games remaining. In fact, they're on the road against the Arizona schools this weekend. As we come to you from Corelli's for Buffs Primetime every Monday night from 7 until 8 o'clock. Coming up next, our player guest, Javon Ruffin, will join us. What do you think? Winter in the Rocky Mountains. You think skiing, obviously, and the CU ski team is into its season. There's some highlights of the lone home meet they just had up in Eldora. Always great to see the ski team in action. One of the best ski programs in all of college athletics. Back in the stampede, Boyce of the Bus, Mark Johnson, back out here at Corelli's Monday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock. we got bus prime time. Our player guest this week was a freshman for the Buffaloes out of New Orleans. He's a great shooter. Javon Ruffin joined us on the show. You having a nice season so far. How do you kind of feel now? The last year you sat out with the injuries and to work your way back from that. How have you felt this season, Blake? Uh, it's been amazing being able to play again. Yeah. Uh, it was tough watching last year with not being able to do anything. I've been able to help the team in practice or in the games, but uh, man, it feels just feels good to be out there, be able to play, be able to contribute, help the team in any way I can. You know, for, for guys that are your, your young guy, you're a basketball player, it's always been a huge part of your life. When you get an injury like that, it, it you, you're kind of missing part of yourself, aren't you? I mean, it shows you how fragile this thing could be. I know Javon Hadley's dealing with that right now, having to take away from him. Do you did you kind of come back to the the injury with a bit more appreciation of what basketball means in your life? Uh, definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, I got hurt. I guess two significant knee injuries in like high school. Yeah. And I mean, each time it's just like I don't know what to do with myself. Sure. I go sit in the chair and shoot one hand shots, or <laughs> still figure out a way to get in the gym, but. Uh, it's definitely difficult not being able to do anything. You know, it's been well documented. Your dad, uh, Michael, played a long time, what, uh, nine, ten years in the NBA. He's a Denver guy, so he had connection back here. Was it just a foregone conclusion that you were going to be a basketball player? I mean, he never forced me into anything, but, yeah. uh, I mean, I went to the gym with him every day since, like, third grade. Is that right? So, uh, I guess he expected it. Hey, this team, where you guys are right now, certainly you've dropped some games that, you know, you didn't want to. 
uh, obviously, at this point. Where would you say this locker room is right now for this team? Uh, I mean, we still know what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we're still going to try to win every game or uh, hopefully get into the tournament. I mean, at this point, it might take the Pac-12 tournament, but we know that each game we win counts. So, yeah. Are you feeling healthy from an ease standpoint? Tad was talking, but you still get the brace on, obviously. Yeah. You made me nervous, by the way, in Salt Lake the other day. You went down and got up and kind of limped back. I got a little worried yeah. for you out there. It wasn't the knee. It was uh, this minor oh. minor ankle thing. Uh, right. Nothing's going to keep me out. Sure. Uh, but can't wait to get it off, though. I bet. How long do you have to wear it? What are they um, just kind of unsure right now. Okay. Uh, a little bit of it's on feel. That's part of, I don't think a lot of people understand that when, when you go through an injury like that. But there's the mental hurdle, isn't there? Uh, but I need to trust my knee when I get back out there. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, I mean, the first time I heard it, uh, I guess it would have been sophomore year or freshman year of high school. Okay. Um, like I came back from that, took the brace off as soon as I could and was going. And then after the second time, it's, it's a little bit harder, a little cautious, just like kind of in the back of your mind. You bet. Uh, so, I mean, it took me a while to even, I played with the brace on. I mean, uh, it was kind of off and on my freshman year practicing, but uh, I didn't take the brace off until, I want to say, after the summer this year. Okay. So it was pretty much a full full year on the brace. On the brace. Have you always been a good shooter? Yeah. Maybe? Yep. Can you tell when the ball's coming off your hand if it's going in or not? Most of the time. Yeah. Was your uh, your dad was a big guy though, sort of. Yeah. He was never he was never known as a shooter, but no. I mean he taught me everything I know. So Is that right? He knows a little something about shooting. Yeah. And that's kind of uh, kind of a rule you found as a young guy in this team. Now Tans talked about where you need to grow as a player and then you know improve and mature as you as any young player would. But that was a way for you to, to get on the court right away, wasn't it? The fact you could shoot that well. Yeah, I mean, it was a, I mean, it's something I know I could do. I've been confident in. I've, I mean, been a shooter the, the, pretty much my whole life since I played. So uh, I know that that's something I can bring to the team, especially since we struggle to shoot it at times. Uh, I mean, I know there's so much more I can do, but at this point, I'm trying to find the gaps that the team needs so I can fill those roles. What are you studying? Um, Probably, I'm in, I haven't decided completely yet, but probably information sciences. Okay. You're a freshman, you don't have to decide yet, but when it's all said and done, after you're done playing, what do you want to do? Um, I mean, eventually I'd like to get a computer science degree. Okay. Um, it's a lot of time, so yeah. I mean, doing it and basketball at the same time are a little difficult, but, uh, I enjoy, like, computer science. That's probably where I'd go after basketball is done. Fancy. Well, we hope that's a long ways down the road, all right? Hey, nice job. Keep up the great work this season. Can't wait to watch your career develop here at the University of Colorado. Thank you. All right, let's hear it for Javon Ruffin. Javon Ruffin's going to be a great one for the Colorado Buffaloes, one of the better shooters we've had around here in a long time as he joins us here at Corelli's Monday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock for us prime time. As you put a wrap this week at the Buffalo Stampede, the CU men on the road Thursday and Saturday at Arizona State in Arizona. The CU women are down in Arizona, Arizona State on Friday, and down in Arizona on Sunday. So we'll wrap things up here in the Stampede. I'm Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next time.